Hello. This week we mark several occasions. It's the seventh Sunday of Easter, that week in the church year that falls between Ascension Day and Pentecost, and I'll talk more about Ascension Day in the sermon. It's also Memorial Day weekend, a time we set aside to remember the men and women who have given the last full measure of devotion. For most Americans, Memorial Day means a day at the mall. Not the National Mall in Washington, D.C. that's home to the memorials to the veterans of World War II, Korea, and Vietnam. Most Americans head to the local mall for the big Memorial Day sale. There won't be many crowded malls this week, or at least there shouldn't be. There won't be many parades either. Perhaps just quiet ceremonies at the cemetery with small flags and a wreath, and more quiet time in quarantine. This pandemic time has given us the gift of time, without distraction, business, or hype. If something good has come from it, it's just this. We have the time to focus on what is most important, on what's more salient than a sale. Take time to remember the men and women who have given the last full measure of devotion. Here is a poem by Annette Wynne entitled Memorial Day. Is it enough to think today of all our brave then put away? The thought until a year has sped, is this full honor for our dead? Is it enough to sing a song and deck a grave and all year long forget the brave who died that we might keep our great land proud and free. Full service needs a greater toll that we who live give heart and soul to keep the land they died to save and be ourselves in turn the brave.
Let us pray. O God of glory, your Son, Jesus Christ, suffered for us and ascended to your right hand. Unite us with Christ and each other in suffering and in joy, that all the world may be drawn into your bountiful presence. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. reading is from Acts chapter 1. When the apostles had come together, they asked Jesus, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, it's not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going and they were gazing up toward heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. 
They said, men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up to heaven? This Jesus whom you've taken up, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way that you saw him go into heaven. Here ends the reading. The good word for the day is remember. Do you remember how Lent began just three months ago? Yes, it was just three months ago, although it seems like light years away. Lent began on Ash Wednesday with those words, Remember that you are dust, and to dust you will return. We repeated those words during Holy Week when Jesus ate his last supper, when he took the bread, gave thanks, and gave it to his disciples saying, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And then at the tomb, when the women went early in the morning and found it open and empty, the messengers asked, why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here, he is risen. Remember how he told you while he was still with you? And then they remembered his words. Now we've come to the end of the Easter season, where we remember that Christ has died, Christ is risen, and Christ will come again. Remembering is not just a way of looking back, it's also a way to look forward. I heard a story about a student who was taking a final exam. It was a large class in one of those freshman lecture halls where the students were mostly anonymous and changed every semester. The instructor told the students that they had one hour for the exam, exactly one hour. When the time was up, they were to put down their pens and turn in their exams. The exam began and the instructor watched the clock. And at the end of the hour, he announced that it was time to stop writing. All the students did except one. They all walked to the front of the room. They put their test papers in a neat pile on the instructor's desk and left. The instructor watched that one student. Time ticked away. And finally, the instructor said, you might as well stop writing. You've already failed the test. The student marched to the front of the room and said defiantly, do you have any idea who you're talking to? I bet you don't even remember my name. The instructor was startled, and he said, as a matter of fact, I don't remember who you are. To which the student replied, that's good. And he shoved his paper in the middle of the stack, and he walked out. I guess there are times when it's better to not remember. This week, we celebrated Ascension Day. Luke's Gospel and its sequel, the Book of Acts, say that after the resurrection, Jesus appeared to his disciples for 40 days. So just like we observed the 40 days of Lent prior to Easter, Luke Acts has a period of 40 days after Easter. And then on the 40th day, Jesus ascends to heaven. It's almost as if history repeats itself. Just like the women who went to the tomb at Easter and were asked, why do you look for the living among the dead? Remember what he told you. Now at the ascension, the men are left standing in the same way, looking up at the sky. And the question is, why are you standing there looking up into the sky? In other words, remember what he told you. He is going to the Father and will return. Remember what we confess in the creed. He ascended into heaven and will come to judge the living and the dead. Remembering is not just a way of looking back. It's also a way to look forward. It is a way to hope. When a person experiences dementia and can't remember things from one day to the next, families go through a grieving process because they know that they're losing the person they've always known. It's called anticipatory grief. It's a very natural reaction to memory loss. What's remarkable is how indelible some memories are. A familiar face, a name, a childhood song, a psalm or a prayer. Even as we lose the capacity to form new memories, we retain some of the most basic, lasting memories. 
I've prayed with people who are dying who may have been barely responsive, but when we begin to say, Our Father who art in heaven, their lips begin to move because that prayer is indelibly etched in their memory. For the church, the most basic, lasting memories are that Jesus loves me, this I know. That the Lord is my shepherd, I want for nothing. That Christ has died, Christ has risen, and Christ will come again. The Christian faith is ultimately about hope for the future by remembering the past. We live not in that 40-day quarantine of Lent, but in an in an ending Easter where Christ has died, Christ is risen, and Christ will come again. Amen.
our prayers of the people today, our response is, hear our prayer. Uplifted by the promised hope of healing and resurrection, we join the people of God in all times and places in praying for the church, the world, and all who are in need. O oh God, call your people to be as one as you are one. Unite your church in the truth of your gospel, the love of our neighbor, and the call to proclaim your reign to all people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Breathe life into your creation. Guide your people as we explore the mysteries of the universe. We pray for the work of scientists, mathematicians, and healthcare workers whose skill and endurance bring new discovery and aid to a hurting world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Make your justice known among the nations of the earth. Protect the vulnerable and redirect those who use violence and greed as weapons. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Come to the aid of your children. We pray for those engulfed in grief, for those without supportive families, and for all who are isolated, powerless, or afraid, that they may rest their anxieties in your care. We pray especially today for the community of Spirit of Grace Lutheran Church in Surprise and Pastor Scott Hackler. Continue to bless the ministry they are doing in your name. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Raise all your saints to eternal life. Until that day, we give you thanks for the faithful examples of those who have listened to your voice and now rest in you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. With bold confidence in your love, almighty God, we place all for whom we pray into your eternal care. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty, and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who, enthroned forever at your right hand, intercedes for us as our great high priest. And so, with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. One, the beginning and the end, the giver of life. Blessed are you for the birth of creation. Blessed are you in the darkness and in the light. Blessed are you for the promise to your people. Blessed are you in the prophet's hopes and dreams. Blessed are you for Mary's openness to your will. Blessed are you for your son Jesus, the word made flesh. 
In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He blessed it and broke it, and he gave it for all to eat, saying, This is my body, given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks. He gave it for all to drink and said, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. It's poured out for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. With this bread and this cup, we remember your word dwelling among us, full of grace and truth. We remember our new birth in his death and resurrection, and we look for hope for his coming. Holy God, we long for your spirit. Come among us and bless this meal. May your word take flesh in us. Awaken your people. Fill us with your light. Bring the gift of peace on earth. All praise and glory are yours, Holy One of Israel, Word of God incarnate, power of the Most High, one God, now and forever. Amen. Together we pray the prayer as Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. May the body and blood of your precious Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you forever in his grace and peace. And the words of our Lord's benediction is this, that the God of steadfastness and encouragement grant you to live in harmony with one another in accordance with Christ Jesus, that the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit and that the God of all grace bless you now and forever. Amen.